All right, I'm delighted to say Denise O'Sullivan is with us. Denise, good morning to you. How are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm very good. What part of the world are you in at the moment? I'm in North Carolina now. Right, okay. Uh, your season is over, is it? The, like the final next week, this weekend coming, is it? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we didn't make the playoffs this year. So we finished our last game on September 30th. So I've been off a while now after international camp. Right, so it's proper off season, hanging out, um, taking advantage of the good weather in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful here right now, but um, just training myself and just hanging with the, the family that I live here and stuff. So it's not too bad. I'm excited to go back to Ireland though and see family soon. I was going to say, so like, is, is that the plan for a while to down, take a bit of downtime? Or like in the past, in the off season, sometimes you've gone alone into Australia. <laughs> Do you have any plans? Yeah, this year I didn't want to go anywhere. Um, I wanted to kind of give my body a rest um, from going and playing again. It, it's been a tough season uh, with the courage. So going to Australia wasn't really on the cards this year. And obviously with the World Cup, I want to, make sure my body is 100% right um, going into next year. So I'll be spending a lot of time training myself here. Um, I'll stay around North Carolina probably for most of the off-season, go home for Christmas, but I'll be in the gym um, getting things right myself. Um, I think you guys missed out on the playoffs by a single point at the end of a 20-game season. Yeah, we did, unfortunately. Um, it was gotten. It's the first time we haven't made the playoffs here since I've been with the club, so it was, it was hard to take, but... Um, we went to San Diego and we needed, basically needed to win that game and, and we drew. And then we needed to, to depend on another result, result which didn't go our way in the end. So missed out by a, by a point, but um, there has been a lot of changes this season. Um, obviously new coach coming in, a lot of new players. We have a mix of young and experienced, no more young this year. So um, still the team is still learning together. They're growing and I think next year we'll be uh, we'll be good to go. Uh, what's life like in North Carolina? It sounds like it's pretty good and it sounds like you like it a lot. What did you say? Sorry, I missed... What's life like in North Carolina? Ah, uh, it, it's great. I love it here, honestly. I love the lifestyle. Um, it's a very, very um, nice place that I live in. I obviously live with a host family here that I met uh, during the pandemic. I started coaching their daughter and now, <laughs> and now I live with them uh, two, two and a half years later. So it's it's really nice and the weather... The weather is really good here and we're close to the beach, we're close to the mountains, so um, it's not bad. <laughs> is this the type of thing where you'd like go to America and never come back? Is that part of your future maybe? <laughs> I hope my mom doesn't see this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it could be part of my future. I, I really do enjoy it here. So um, And the league is, is very competitive, but we'll see, we'll see. Well, because, you know, it's always one of those things where you come back, tear up trees for Ireland, uh, sometimes player of the match, sometimes scoring loads and loads and loads of goals, sometimes creating the winner. And everyone's like, oh, you, how come you're not playing in the in the women's league in, in England? And you're like, well, because of Carolina, it's much nicer. Yeah, I get, I get that a lot. A lot of people ask me that. And I think I've, I've settled here and um, I still challenge myself every single day that I'm here. And that's why I show up to camp in, in top shape, because... The environment that I'm part of here is top, top class, very professional. It's one of the toughest training environments in the league. Um, Pre-season is absolutely horrific in a good way. Um, so I get very fit. And throughout the year, I also stay fit because I look after my body very well. And and that's why I show up to international camp and I'm able to do what I do because I do I do take care of myself. <laughs> so that's why I'm still playing in this league because it's I would say it's one of the best in the world. Yeah, and it's, it's it's so well, so long established as one of the best leagues in the world that there's like a tradition and rivalries and, um, you know, it's, it's it's just accepted that it is there. Whereas the league in England is kind of just getting up to that level where it's uh, it's expected that the coverage will be at the level that it's at at the moment. Um, that's like mm -hmm. you've, you've kind of had a front row seat for all that. I, I do want to ask you, um, we got on to the World Cup, obviously, and, and um, in, in a moment, but the, the bit where you realised that you wanted to be a full-time professional athlete and that you actually really enjoyed the dedication that is required to get your body right for all those games. When did that penny drop with you? Were you a teenager? Even at that stage, were you thinking, right, I can do this? Yeah, I was young, honestly. Um, I was probably before 15 years old. I was always, I always had a football at my feet. I was always out in the street playing all day long with all the boys. My mom would call me in for dinner at 8pm that night, so I, I would never, ever stop until I got home from school. And once I got called in today, you know, the school's teams, the Irish teams, I just knew that I wanted to be a professional football footballer. It was always there. The love for the game was always there. So um, 
I knew from a very, definitely from a very, very young age that I wanted to be that. And I just put my mind to it from a, a young age and, and stuck with it and worked hard. And um, yeah. <laughs> is, the, is the key moment the move to Glasgow or was it even before that where you were like, OK, actually, I could make it all the way to professionalism here? I think it, it was definitely that helped a lot to move the move to Glasgow because before that, I, I always knew I wanted to be a professional footballer. But I think the, the hurdle that I had to get over was leaving home, you know. Um, obviously coming the youngest of 10 in my family, being around my family all the time. Um, it was very, very hard for me to leave home. So once I got over that hurdle and I'd done it, then um, I got a, a taste of what life could be as a professional footballer, you know. Um, and once I got that taste, I, I knew from there on that I was going to I was going to kick on and um, yeah, play at the highest level eventually. And so obviously Glasgow is, is successful. Uh, you know, you scored a goal every second game over the course of three seasons with them. When does the opportunity to come to the States happen? How did that fall into place? Uh, we actually played uh, the USA with the national team. I think it was back in 2015. Um, I was with Glasgow at the time and I had an agent then as well, you know, uh, representing me. And um, I'm pretty sure the Houston Dash coaches or whatever got in touch. They seen me play against the USA. They got in touch with my my agent representative and they just spoke from there on and um, going to the USA. When I was there with the national team, I, I remember saying to Sav, Savannah McCarthy, like I would love, to, I remember it like on the bus, I said to her, I would love to play in the USA. And um, she'll tell you that herself. And after that, it was it was so interesting because everything just started to happen. And uh, they were talking about contracts. And uh, then it just, I, I was just there. It was mad. So um, yeah, USA was always somewhere I wanted to play in. Still here, <laughs> six and, years later. Well, so that like that's the bit. So you you get you get somewhere, and you don't know if you're going to make a success of it. Obviously, you you know you you give yourself every opportunity you possibly can in terms of fitness mm -hmm. and psychology and everything. But like, when do you realize you're good enough to be there and to actually not just be good enough to be there, but to actually be there and thrive? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy at all. I I first went to Houston, and I had to go through a lot of challenges in that first second year um first year was was all right I was getting game time and then going into the second year a new a changing coach coach didn't really like me fair enough um and I got a minute playing time every game sometimes I wouldn't even come onto the pitch and um I do remember coming back to the national team we played against Scotland and I just wasn't myself on the pitch no confidence I uh, wasn't fit because I wasn't getting game time I wasn't sharp so um I did have a chat in camp with uh, Dan Horan, the, the strength coach, and he said to me, you got to go back and tell him that you need to leave. And uh, I built up the courage to go do that. And after that, my career just kicked on when the North Carolina Courage wanted me to, to come down here. Because in American sports, it's not quite as easy. Like trades <laughs> do happen, no. but it's not it's not the same. Like there's there's not that kind of general acceptance that the, the player has a lot of power. You can refuse to play, you can ask for a trade, but like you very frequently get treated really badly if you do that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, definitely wasn't easy. And I think that's why I was half afraid to go and tell them. But um, I did anyway. And the way it works here is they said, yes, you can you can leave um, as long as you... <laughs> As long as you don't go to another team in the NWSL, that's what they said. And um, I was planning to go to Germany at the time. Um, and then I got put out in a waiver list, which happens here in this league. Once you're released, you get put out in a waiver list. And within 24 hours, um, any team in the league can come in for you. So the next day, uh, the Courage, a few days after, the Courage contacted um, myself and said, we want you to come down here. So uh yeah, it's not it's not an easy uh, process here, but it definitely worked out in the end for me. Yeah, so hard hard in your mouth for those kind of seventy two hours <laughs> while you're waiting to see exactly what happens, and then you're like, yes, Carolina sounds great. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, nice... obviously not. I obviously not playing a minute with with Houston. You think, ah, sure, there's no team going to come in for me, and that's why that's why I was prepared to go to Germany. Um, but luckily, the, the courage to come in in the end. <laughs> and so when you get there, that's the bit where you start to feel like, first off, they want you because they've claimed you off waivers. And then the environment is obviously something that you responded to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 100%. And the first few weeks, I was absolutely lost in the environment because it was such a high level um, compared to Houston, no disrespect. But the level was just so different to the training, the players. Um, so yeah, it took me. It definitely took me a while uh, to get used to the environment, and 
it took me months to get into the starting 11. Um, I would come on and play a few minutes here and there, but um, I really, really had to work hard once I got here and get myself into the starting 11. And I actually started um, in the number 10 here <laughs> uh, playing for this team. And um, it, it wasn't quite working out for me. Obviously in the number 10, you want to be scoring goals and you want to be assisting, but I guess I was new in the league and it was it was hard for me to do it at the time. And um, I got moved into the number six, the deeper role, and that seemed to really suit me. And I'm still I'm still playing in that position to this day. So it is it's working out well there. I really really do like that deeper position and that, um, playing in the six. That's important, isn't it? Because like the difference just from the ability to use your your technical proficiencies, stamina, all that kind of stuff. That um, you know, and also then deeper lying passing range is hugely mm-hmm. important. So did that did that happen in like were there conversations with the coaches saying, listen, I would I think, you know, or does it like one day in training you're just kind of ignoring the the uh orders and you're like, I'm gonna start playing number six and see if they notice that I'm not doing what I'm told, <laughs> but I'm really good at it. How does it work? Nah, it was it was definitely conversations with the coaches, with the staff and um they saw me at the time playing in that number six. Um so long game I just got thrown in there I think it was against Seattle and um, probably didn't have my best game in the first game playing there I was uh, it was it was quite scary because you're receiving the ball closer to your own goal so if you mess up then you know it can be on you so I was quite I was quite scared and not as confident but as I played more games I grew into it and grew into it and um, with this team now we still play a 4-4-2 box formation so the possession goes through the sixes all the time. So I get a lot of the ball when I'm playing here. I'm the start of the build up and um, most of the time as well as the centre back. So I do I do get a lot on the ball and I get to create and, and break lines um in doing that as well. So um it's a, it's really nice. And then defensively as well, it's 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 a lot of work, but it's what I like to do. And so um while that's all happening, obviously your Ireland career is happening in parallel as well. Um the, the journey that the Ireland team has been on where we're going to a nas- uh, an international tournament in the, the World Cup next year, you, you came through an underage setup where qualifying for tournaments was actually something that happened a, a bit. Like uh and mm-hmm. so you know <sighs> That's a good thing in that it conditions your expectations when you become a senior international. You're like, well, why wouldn't we be qualifying for tournaments? Every time I've played for Ireland, we've tried to qualify and then we did qualify and then we reached the final and uh, like we perform when we get there. So was it like right. that when you got into the senior team or did it take a little while for that kind of attitude to kind of become more manifest amongst you and your the rest of your teammates? Yeah, it definitely took a while. And look international uh, senior international football is completely different the level is it's ridiculous you know playing in, at that level and um, senior international but the teams you come up against and even the qualifying pro- process it was it was unbelievable like to get through it was so difficult to be able to qualify and and um, to be able to do it and get to a world cup was it's it's phenomenal i'm still like in <laughs> i'm still in disbelief that we actually made it you know to the world cup but um yeah, it was. It's always hard at a senior international football. The qualifying process is really difficult to do, um, to get through. And and you see that the last few years, the teams that we get in our groups are like Sweden, Germany, um, and then second ranked teams as well. Very very difficult teams. So um, it is. It's completely different to underage. And um, now that we're actually going to a World Cup is, I can't even put into words. I'm absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Is there so outside the camp? We look back on the friendly with Australia as this kind of very significant turning point. It's only a friendly, sure, or whatever, but actually Australia very highly ranked, uh, coming off a really great run, and it's a, a topsy turvy game where there's loads of goals scored. It's kind of a little bit out of character. It wasn't just a, a one nil. Um, right? Was that was that the shot in the arm that the team needed in terms of confidence, or had you kind of felt like actually the progress was being made anyway? Yeah, I, I felt like the progress was being made anyway. And um, before that, I think this team has been has been grown the past two years, year and a half, two years, and um, to play against Australia at home and and get that result, it definitely did give us more confidence. We knew we could uh, do something special from there on for sure. Um, Australia being, I think they're ranked thirteenth in the world. Um, very very good team. One of the best players, one of the best strikers in the world they have in Sam Kerr. So. Um, we know we know what kind of team they are. They're they're very very good, but and obviously playing them in the first game and their host nation, I'm sure they'll have a huge huge crowd behind them. Um, 
will be difficult, but it's 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 really exciting. I can't wait. It is kind of ironic that they were important on the staging post for this team to get the self confidence to start expressing itself the way they have over the course of the competition, and then lo and behold, we're out uh, first in the first game of the World <laughs> Cup. It's kind of class. Like you, you want the opening ceremony, you want the opening game. It's such, it's like every game in the World Cup is going to be big, right? Blah, blah, blah. But the first game exactly. and the final, they're the two biggest games. Like, we all know this. Right. Yeah. When I when I saw the draw, I was like, Australia, that is phenomenal. I was buzzing when I seen that because they're the games you want to be part of. They're the occasions you want to be part of. Um, yeah, it's 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 going to be very, very, very exciting. Um, but obviously, it's a, it's a tough group. As you said, you get, there's no easy games in the World Cup. So, um Whoever we got, I would have been, I would have been happy with because we're going and um, we're not just going there to compete. We're going there to to do something special, and I think this team can can really do something special now. We're we're really growing and we've come together as a, a really good team. So um, yeah, this next summer is going to be exciting. Looking back on the qualifying campaign, are there any other turning points where you think actually that's really important for us as a group, as a team? Were there moments that you think back to and go, if that hadn't happened, it might not have galvanised us the way we were or we might not have believed in ourselves the way we had to at the end? I mean, a lot of results in the qualifying campaign, I think the Sweden game was absolutely huge. I think getting that point away from home was, I mean, if we didn't do that, I I, I think we may not be in this position today, you know. Um, but yeah, that was a turning point for us over there. I think we really came together as a team. Um, very, very tough game. Um, we were sitting on top of our own box for almost 90 minutes and and uh, they're the, the type of games that we can, you know, we, we love to do that. Our, our defence is absolutely phenomenal and, and they were excellent in that game and we can we can sit deep, we can stay compact and, and we can work very, very hard. That's something that's a, a really good quality that the team has. So I think that Sweden game, getting that point there was, was absolutely huge for us. Uh, I, I wonder how much you feel about the uh, transformation in, in the level of excitement that the team generates amongst the public. Um, we had Emma um, Byrne on commentary for us that night and she was obviously down pitch side at the end and Nathan was doing all the interviews, but so many people were coming over and, and the conversation automatically leaned back towards Liberty Hall and the stand that her and her teammates had to take mm -hmm. uh, to transform women's football, the tracksuits being taken back off them, changing the airports, to the bit where it's the billboards and it's ads on TV and it's full coverage mm -hmm. of everything and um, and you're going to a World Cup. It's like, it's an incredible short pace, period of time between then and now. I know. It's, it's looking back at it, it's absolutely phenomenal and uh, going back to that day in Liberty Hall, um, those girls, the Emma Burns, the Yvonne Tracys, Anya Gormans, um, a lot more as well. They really changed women's football for us. They stood up for us that day and, and um, they're a huge part of the reason why we're going to a World Cup now. Um, but yeah, looking at it now, the, the amount of coverage we have, the excitement that after that Scotland game, the excitement around Ireland was, it was phenomenal. I've never got so many messages in my life. Um, coming into my phone from people that I actually had no idea that even liked women's football. Um, just seeing that, the, yeah, it, it's really, it's it's phenomenal. It's emotional, honestly, because the change is like, it's brilliant and it, it's really good to see. And I think we'll have such huge support um, going to the World Cup uh, next year, which is very exciting. You obviously know football in Australia really well from your, your time down there. Um, like, that's good that you've been down there and there's no mystery around it. Like, you've played against these... Mm -hmm. It's really good that we did play them in that friendly and that we did beat them as well. So it's not like, oh, it's Australia. They're, you know, geez, they, they right. could easily spank us. It's like, well, I mean, you know, maybe things go really badly, but we've just beaten them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we can take confidence from that. But look, I think how long ago was that game? No, I think they were missing quite a few players as well um, in that game, uh, starting 11 players. So I think they'll be a different team. I think they will be well prepared coming into this World Cup. They're playing a World Cup at home, they're going to be the most prepared they'll ever be in their life. So I think it will be a different game. I think it's going to be a lot more challenging than the game we played in Tallis Stadium. Um, but for us, we'll also be more prepared as well um, than that game that we played against Australia. So I think it's going to be a good battle and um, they are really an excellent team. So it's it's going to be tough, but it's a game that you want to be part of, you know. Uh when the ball's at your feet, this, you realise now that you're etched forever in Irish football history because of the through ball for like the most important goal that's ever been scored in women's football history. So when the ball's at your feet, did you know the run was going to be so good for Amber Barrett? Were you like, this is, I've got one chance to hit this here, hit it? 
I did. We actually kind of made eye contact, me and Amber, um, when that actually happened. Obviously, it was a very composed header from Nia Fahey, um, and I had a lot of space in the middle of the pitch, so I turned, and um, me and Amber kind of glanced at each other. I know it was from far away, but I knew exactly what she was going to do. Um, and I mean, what made the goal was her first touch. It was a fantastic run, but um, her first touch would, if she didn't have that first touch, I don't think we would have got, she would have scored that goal. So um, big credit to Amber for for a phenomenal first touch. She needs to do that more often. <laughs> and the toe poke into the corner is just a thing of beauty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a, it was a great finish. Um, that toe poke, she needed to do that. And honestly, the ball, when I was looking, I had my hands on my head. I was like, is this going to go in? It took forever to go into the back of the net, honestly. But um, when it happened, it was it was absolutely unbelievable. And it was very fitting for her to score that goal on the night as well. I was very proud of her and really happy. Yeah, I don't, it, was a tough, it was a tough day. I don't know if you've had a chance to see her interview on TV afterwards, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Like it, you know, it, It's also going down in the annals of, of history as like one of the great post-match Irish sports interviews ever. Like For her to be able to... Uh, channel all that, explain how mm-hmm. the goal was scored and still have time for a joke at the end uh, while perfectly capturing the sombre mood uh, was just sensational. Yeah, it, it was phenomenal. And for her, in a, such a big in such a big moment to score a goal that's potentially going to bring the team to the World Cup to then go over and be just really calm and, um, you know, dedicate that goal um, to the people who were lost in that tragedy. It was absolutely... It was phenomenal, and yeah, we were all we were all very proud of her because she she did have a tough few days, and um, for us to see her do that was it was it was really good. Uh, this team is obviously in a cycle now where fingers crossed we do well at the World Cup, and fingers crossed that improves our seeding for the next draw for the Euros, and then you know hopefully it's this kind of nice rolling ball of momentum that the the team can get. That's brilliant from uh, for football generally and for women's football from a personal level. You know, we've talked about your medium-term future, certainly in America. Is there a long-term future in football for you? Do you want to be a coach? Is that something that you're interested in? Because, like, you know, it sounds like it's been your life up to this point and there are growing numbers of opportunities for high-profile people with uh, multitude experience backgrounds. You know what football's like in Australia. You know what it's like in America. You know what it's like in Ireland. You know what it's like in Scotland. Like, it's a brilliant mm-hmm. CV you've put together kind of almost accidentally in a way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's definitely something I want to I want to stay in sports for sure. Um I'm in the process of doing my B license, so we'll see we'll see about coaching, but I have another huge interest in media as well. Um working in media, so um hopefully in the next few years I can get the ball rolling on that and get some experience and and see where it goes, but I do definitely want to stay in sport. It's it's growing now. Uh, women's football is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so yeah it's something I would love to do well listen enjoy the downtime however uh, downtime is I presume it's a lot of is it, is it kind of boring training when there's no matches um, no I love in the off season I love going <laughs> I love going into the gym um, just to work on myself things that I need to work on I think the last part of the season there it was game after game after game I think we had eight eight or nine games in three and a half weeks so I couldn't really get myself in the gym. I couldn't really keep my strength up. Um, so now that I have no games, it's something I can really focus on, uh, just keeping strong and keeping, you know, just injury prevention stuff. So that's what I'm focusing on right now for the next the next uh, few months, which is, is really nice. I love doing it. 